Next, we have the linear factors theorem. And the linear factors theorem tells us that if I'm given the polynomial f of x, and if f has degree greater than or equal to 1, and my leading coefficient's not 0, then f can be factored as the leading coefficient times a string of factors. And in fact, they're called linear factors because in each of these, x is to the first power. And all the c's are going to be constants. They could be non-real complex constants, and they might be the same. So for example, we could have f of x equals 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 3. So our factors are the same. Or we could have g of x, which could equal, whoa, there we go, maybe negative 1 half times x minus, and we'll pick a complex number. How about 2 plus 3i? And we'll change the numbers up a little bit. 5 plus 6i times x minus 5 minus 6i. So in that case, we have two non-real complex numbers. But regardless, what the linear factors theorem tells us is that every function can be written as a constant times a string of linear factors. In other words, an nth degree polynomial can be factored as a product of n linear factors. So if I have a fourth degree polynomial, I could have up to, I could have four linear factors. Remember, factors give us roots. So let's look at an example. We want to know what is the maximum number of roots, I should say number, not numbers, that each of the following functions could have. Does this mean that each function will have that many roots? For f of x, we have f of x equals x squared plus 25. Degree f is 2, so I can have up to two roots. For g of x, I have x to the 32nd minus x to the 16th plus 3x to the 10th. The degree of g is 32, so I can have up to 32 roots or 32 factors. And lastly, h of x, negative 4x to the 5th minus 12x cubed plus 57. The degree of h is 5, so we can have up to 5 roots. Now again, this does not necessarily mean that we will have that many roots. For example, if I had f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. That factors into x plus 3 times x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared. I have one root at x equals negative 3 for this problem. So for this one, even though the degree is 2, I only have one root. The point of the linear factors theorem is that it tells us the maximum possible roots we can have while the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that we will have at least one root. So by the fundamental theorem of algebra, our polynomials have at least one root. And by the linear factors theorem, we know the maximum number of roots possible for each function.